All right, so let's look at this problem. Let's read it, and then uh, hopefully you got the answer. The answers are given down here. Okay, so uh, hopefully you got that. All right, but let's go through. Let's check. Okay, so calculate the F minus ion concentration and the pH of a solution that's simultaneously 0 0.2 and 0.1 HF and HCl. And they give us Ka for HF, which is a nice clue. Oh, there goes my timer from before. <laughs> All right, so there's a nice clue that HF is the weak acid, so that makes sense, okay. So initially, 0.2 HF, zero and zero if it was just the weak acid equilibrium, right? But it's not because we're throwing in some HCl of 0.1, and HCl gives us 0.1 H plus, and that's zero. Okay, so it's slightly different. H plus is the common ion here. Change minus x plus x plus x. Equilibrium again. Make the weak acid approximation. And the question did say. What is F minus? F minus is X, right? So we'll solve for X in a moment, okay? And then the pH, okay? The pH is gonna be straightforward, which we'll talk about last, because we know the concentration is 0.1, right? Essentially. What we could do, and we'll do it to compare, we'll throw in the amount of H plus that comes from the HF dissociation and see how much it affects pH. It won't affect it hardly at all, I think. Okay, so, okay, A equals products. 0.1 times x over 0 0.2. You should probably do that, right? Therefore, 6.8 times 10 to the minus 4 equals 0 0.1 x 0.2. Therefore, x, which equals, if you remember, F minus the thing we want equals 6.8 times 10 to the minus 4, 0 0.2 over 0 0.1, which equals 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Okay, look down here. Yes, that's what we got. Now, pH is easy, right? pH. I'm going to put approximately identically equal to the concentration of H plus is approximately 0.1, right? So it's minus log of 0 0.1, which equals 0.1 log, I should know that, 1, right? pH equals 1. What happens if we actually count in? It's not just that. It's if we did this for real, right? It's actually 0 0.10 plus X, right? Okay. So the actual, if we wanted to do this kind of for the true amount of H plus there with the H plus from the HCl and the H plus from the, oh, let me just move that up, sorry about that. So the pH is one for 0.1 moles per liter, right? The actual pH is the minus log of 0 0.1 plus, there's actually an extra little bit from the HF dissociation, six point, oh, what was the number? Yeah, 6.8 times 10 to the minus four. All right, so that is point one, one, two, three, six, eight. That's the actual concentration in you know everyday units, right? So obviously, you know, let's do the log of that. Point one zero oh, zero oh, six eight log point nine nine seven. So to the third significant figure, it's different. Did we measure? No, we didn't measure the third significant figure, so it's the same. So if that's your comment, okay negligible H plus from HF. Okay. All right, so that kind of proves that the weak, oh, move it up. Negligible H plus from HF, just that, right? Which kind of proves that the weak acid approximation is valid. Okay, so that's another way to show that. Okay, and there's one for our answer. All right. And any questions on this, uh, feel free to download the note packet I'm doing right now, take a look at it in more detail, or ask a question of me or others at the discussion section. All right, now we move on to the legendary buffers. Okay, so as we mentioned, a buffer solution is typically a weak acid and its conjugate base in the same container, but you can have 
weak bases as well. So you can have a weak base with its conjugate acid in containers, okay? We can do both, okay? But we tend to concentrate on the weak acid versions, all right? This is, as we mentioned, and don't get intimidated by this at all, right? This is a very specific application of the common ion effect. We have both conjugate base and weak acid in the same beaker, okay? So it's so the one we just looked at, right? So the HF1 and the acetic acid one we just did were buffer solutions. We just didn't delve into the math in any more detail, right? So it's something we've already looked at, something we've already looked at. And we're just gonna talk about it in terms of how that solution would change if we started to mess with it in terms of adding H plus and OH minus. Okay, so Chatelier's principle applies, right? So we're gonna have this in a beaker. So think of this in a beaker, all right? Okay, so we have HA in equilibrium with H plus and A minus, right? Okay, if we throw in some H plus from an external source, so we have buffers in our blood, right? It's actually a carbonate buffer, right? Which we'll talk about later, but if we got stung by an ant or anything with like the injectors with acid, yeah, it stings for a second, right? And then it goes away because the H plus introduced to our blood is then removed from solution, okay? If it stayed there and built up to a significant level, it would kill us, all right? Okay, so our blood naturally removes external H plus. It actually also removes external OH minus if it gets into us, but in nature, H plus is a thing that's often found in stings, which makes sense. All right, so back to it. So if a large amount of H plus from an external source were added, what would happen? Well, remember this is in a beaker, right? This would go up, wouldn't it? Right, if the external amount of H plus went in, the amount of H plus would go up. What would the equilibrium do? It would react it away by turning these things into reactants. Okay, and that's how a buffer works. If you have H plus as a product over here and you throw H plus in, it gets removed. Okay, so H plus as a product, well, you know, act according to Chatelier, Chatelier when you add extra external H plus. Fair enough, now that's the easy one to understand. The harder one to understand is resisting base, right? So let's go back and look at a equation again, but with base, right? So that's my generic. Okay, now think about it. Oh, let me, forgot to mention it. Should have written it down. In the top one, move to the left. Okay, to remove H plus. Okay, now back to the base, okay. What happens when we add base in there? Well, remember H plus and OH minus are both strong reagents and they react together to make what? H2O, ah, so we're actually removing H plus from the solution to make H2O when we add OH minus. So if this goes down, what are we gonna do? We're gonna make some more, right? How do we make more? We turn reactants to products. So it moves to the right, okay? So that's how it works. When we remove H plus, we move to the left, when we since you remove external OH, we react it away, and then we replace the H plus that was reacted away. It moves to the right. Okay, so the equilibrium moves in different directions depending on what the external source is. Okay, H plus or OH minus. All right. Now, if you think about it, if I've got more H plus than HA, I'll be better at one thing than the other, okay? And that comes to buffering capacity, okay? Buffering only works until you run out of buffering agent, okay? So if I run out of H+, plus, I can't remove any more OH-, minus, for example, okay? So a buffer will resist changes in pH. It will keep doing what it does, removing external H+, plus, removing external OH-, minus, until it runs out of the thing it needs to remove those items, okay? so. The buffering capacity is usually stated as a straight concentration. If I got 0.1 molar H plus in there, I can do a 0.1 molar OH, okay? However, we normally talk about it in terms of a ratio, yeah? So if I've got conjugate acid to conjugate base in the 10 to one ratio, I can do 10 more of one thing than the other, okay? So we have absolute amount and also ratio of the components, all right? Now, question is, 
you know, you can create a buffer to maintain any, well, within limits, any pH, okay? And to think about that, think about a titration, because when you do a titration, you change the pH rapidly when you have a strong acid, strong base. And if I do a strong acid, strong base, remember, a strong acid and a strong base have negligible strength conjugates, so this math doesn't apply. If I do pH versus volume NaOH for a strong acid, we get that classic strong acid, strong base titration curve. And at the middle of that inflection is where it's equivalent. Okay. Now, real quick, this is kind of interesting because this range in which this happens is extremely narrow. So you could choose any indicator you want because they'd all change over this narrow addition of an AOH here. Okay, if we look back, I can find my little picture here. People have this idea in their head that, oh, we use phenolphthalein because it changes at pH 7. Oh, no, it doesn't. Phenolphthalein changes at pH 9. We use phenolphthalein because it goes from colorless to pink, right? Okay. Why does that not matter with a strong acid, strong base? Because the gradient's super steep here. It doesn't matter which area of this really rapid increase I look at, it's gonna change for any of the indicator pHs, okay? So phenolphthalein is actually up there. Phenolphthalein doesn't change at pH 7, it changes at pH 9, right? So that's pH 9, but that's okay. That's okay, because it's in this steep change here, okay? Now when we have a buffered solution, all bets are off, essentially, right? It's kind of pretty interesting what happens. So when we have a buffered solution, remember, let me draw you the graph first. All right. A weak acid, so I'm gonna have conjugate, right? So it's gonna have conjugate in there. So I've got HA, A minus, right? So there's gonna be acid in the solution to start. Emily. Gonna have a lower pH to start, okay. And then we'll start to react as normal, but then we get what we call a buffering region. Okay, in the buffering region, we're adding NaOH, yeah. So OH is coming in, reacting with this to make water, and then this is replacing it, yeah? Okay, so let's move to the right. So in this region here, we're replacing the H plus that's reacted away with more H plus. So the pH stays approximately constant because the amount of H plus is approximately constant. We call that the buffering region. Okay, so it's like a flat part of the curve. And then it just goes crazy, one that runs out of HA. When this is gone, it just turns into this curve, okay? So if you think about it, it is that curve, but with this extra kind of buffering region, all right? Hopefully that makes sense, okay? So we'll always have a flat region of the curve in a buffered system where pH is approximately constant across a large, change in external NaOH concentration, or in this case, if, you know, if we did the other one, external H plus. All right. There's an example of the two uh, curves together. There's the classic strong acid, strong base. There's the buffering region for a weak acid, strong base. Okay. All right. Now, in order to find, and this is that question we're gonna get back to the previous page on, okay? Remember those students that came into my office and wanted to know what the pH of a buffer was? Well, it's kind of easy, to be honest, okay? And once I told them the secret, they were like, oh, that's easy, okay. So here are some uh, buffers, okay? They're all weak acid buffers, okay? So there's our strong acid, that might be HCl. And then a stronger, sorry, a weaker, 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 and then the weakest weak acid. So we see the Ka's go from a reasonably larger value for Ka to a super small value, okay? Now, if you look, let's pick maybe this one here, okay? The buffering region seems to go from pH five to pH six, right? That seems to be the bracketed region there, okay? And then right in the middle, actually goes slightly above six, Right in the middle is kind of the average, isn't it? 
So if we go there, let's read it, okay. Diagram illustrating the buffer region for weak acids, okay. What do you notice about the relationship between Ka and the natural pH, all right? So here, pH equals 6, pKa equals 10 to the minus 6. Oh, look at that. Oh, sorry, Ka. Ka is 10 to the minus 6. I had a bit of a Freudian slip there, if you see what I'm doing. Okay, so the pH of the buffer is 6, and the Ka is 10 to the minus 6. What's pKa? Minus log, 6. Ah, so right in the middle, halfway along the buffering region, right in the middle, the pH equals the pKa. So if you want a buffer of pH 6, choose a system with a Ka or a pKa of 6 as well. Okay, so pH equals pKa. That's the trick for the free meds. Okay, pH, pKa, well, approximately a buffer. Okay, so right in the middle of that, it'll change a little bit, but right in the middle, it's true. Okay, so pH equals pKa. We'll do a little bit of illustrative math for that in a second. All right, then we'll flip back to that other question. All right. So our first, if you wish, true buffer question, right? Okay, and you're probably going to set something pretty similar to this on your uh, final midterm, right? So buffers are essentially weak acids or weak bases with their conjugates. Use an ICE grid. Use an ICE grid. We're going to modify it just like the way we did with the common ion. All right. So find the pH have a buffer that's 0.12 lactic acid and 0.1 sodium lactate, okay? So lactic acid, H, C3, H5, O3. Yeah, that's the stuff in your muscles, right? Any workout? Okay, there it is. Like a grid, I, C, E, 0.1. Two, zero, and then hey, we got a sodium lactate, so same concentration of lactate ion initially. All right, so that's our initial setup, right? Change, usual thing, minus x, plus x, plus x. Apply weak acid approximation on the fly. Okay. So actually the math turns out easier because it's now x squared now, right? So Ka is oh, H plus that. that. Okay, which equals H plus is x times other product, 0.1 over 0.12. Ka is, of course, given 1.4 times 10 to the minus 4. Oh, move it up. Okay, I need that Pavlovian bell, right? <laughs> okay, so just catch up there. So, products at equilibrium, reactants at equilibrium. Okay, so therefore, x, which equals h plus, equals 1.4 times 10 to the minus 4, 0.12. One, which equals, do that math, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4. So pH minus log of H plus line concentration, that number, 3.77. So that buffer will maintain a pH of 3.77. Oh, move it up here. Sorry about that. That buffer will maintain a pH of 3.77 when you throw an external H plus or OH minus. All right. Now, some interesting math. I'm old, that's an old group, but a cool group. That's the verve, right? Okay. Now, drugs are typically either weak acids or weak bases, right? So when you have something like aspirin or anything else you care to even think about, any kind of drug 
either has a carboxylic acid group on it or a nitrogen somewhere, which would make it a weak base. Okay, so drugs are typically weak acids or weak bases. So their equilibria are affected by this math. Okay, that's why it's such interest to MCAT and PCAT examiners. Okay, so drugs, it's important. If they're soluble, they can be taken as a tablet. If they're not soluble, they have to be injected, right? Okay, so of super relevance and importance. Okay, now on the MCAT and the PCAT test, there's loads of questions about buffers and pHs and things like that because of the relevance to drugs. Okay, so the question is, do you think they, i.e. the examiners, expect you to do a big old ICE table like we just did? The answer is obviously no, <laughs> right? There's a trick. Okay, so we'll do a little bit of a derivation and show you a really nice equation. Okay, it's called the Henderson Hasselbach equation. I just call it the, the HH equation. Okay, literally anybody with a 200 or 100 level algebra can do this, right? Okay, but when a biochemist does it, apparently it's cause for a celebration. Okay, so <laughs> let's show you what they did and how they pat themselves on the back so hard when they got this equation and then how actually simple it is. Okay, so what we need is a relationship between pH and pKa, just like we saw with the previous graph, okay? All right, so Ka equals H plus A minus over HA, our standard equilibrium expression, right? Okay, so eventually you want pKa, right? So why not take the log of both sides. Okay. Log of Ka equals log of. And I write this slightly differently. I want to get H plus on its own eventually, right? Because minus log of H plus is pH. Okay. Now. Real quick, the log of something times something is the logs added together, right? So log Ka equals log of H plus plus log of A minus over HA. We're nearly there, folks, because remember the minus log is that P function, right? So just multiply everything three by minus. Minus log of Ka is pKa minus log of H plus is pH minus log we're adding a minus plus you have to excuse the background noise I live in a house full of other people <laughs> all right so there it is okay so that's the Henderson Hasselbach equation Pat yourself on the back. Very good, right? By a chemist. But don't get ahead of yourself. All right. <laughs> Let's modify that. There we go. So there it is. Okay, that's the relationship between pH and pKa. Now, that half equivalence thing. If you remember that graph, right? Let's go back. Try and find it. Excuse me, but rustling around here, right? So pH equal pKa exactly halfway across the buffering region, right? That means you've used up half of the HA to make A minus essentially, right? So think about that. If I if I had 100 HA to start and I use half of them up, it turns into 50, right? And I got 50 A minus at that point, right? So these numbers are equal at half equivalent, equal at half, what we call half equivalence, right? So hey, any number divided by itself is one, log of one is zero. So at half equivalence, halfway across that buffering region, pH equals pKa. Because the slope on that graph wasn't so great, we can always say, hey, pH is approximately pKa, right? Because it's not such a big height difference, if you like. All right, okay. pH equals pKa at half equivalence. But if you want the details, if you want all the extra, you know, significant figures and all that, that's the equation you would use. So let's go back and let's do that equation, okay? Again, let's do it again. 
but this time using the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, right? So it's the same question as before, right? And we got 3.7 or whatever it was, right? So it was this one, right? So we did it just a minute ago, our first proper one. We got 3.77. Let's just throw it into the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, right? So what's the pH of a buffer? Okay. So pH equals pKa, all right? Minus log of 1.4 times 10 to the minus 4. Minus log is the p function, remember? Plus the log of a minus, which is the acetate over the acid 0.12. All right, let's run the numbers. 3.85. Plus negative 0 0.08, 3.77. Oh, That's what they want you to do on the PCAT. <laughs> okay, so use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation as long as you have the ratio and the Ka, you can always work it out. Okay, so that's a nice shortcut. Nice shortcut. Now, real quick, got a couple of minutes left before the buzzer goes off. Back to that page here. If we look, halfway along, I've used up half, halfway towards the, uh, the equivalence point, halfway is here, so that's half equivalence. So that's pKa1, right? At pKa1, we have that number. pKa equals pKh at that number, right? So pKa is 2.3 Ka. Do the math. Just find the page in my notes. Do the reverse math, so to speak. So 10 to the minus pKa, if you do that math, 5.0 times 10 to the minus 3. Down here, similar kind of deal. 10 to the minus pKa. I um, apologize for rushing, my buzz is about to go off. 10 to minus 10. All right, so bottom line is, because I knew pKa at half equivalence, Ka, pKa, remember P is take the minus log, okay? So 10 to the minus Ka would be the reverse. Okay, pKa, pKa would be the reverse. All right. Stop there. I've got one minute, 40 seconds until the buzzer goes off. Um, next video, video three, we'll start talking about this whole half equivalence thing in a little bit more detail, okay? So I've given you a brief kind of guide there of how that works. We'll meet that concept and we'll formalize it, okay? And we'll get to the point where we make our PCAT friends happy, all right? Okay, let's stop there.